So, okay. And now, now, now it works. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, my main goal is uh, the, well, the class of integrable systems, which uh, well, was uh, suggested mainly by uh, Sasha Goncharov and uh, Eric Kenyon, and, uh, uh, th but the approach to, to the integrable system, but it's not new integrable systems, there's very old integrable systems. So in particular, some new, some old. And uh, I uh, will start really from the historically first integrable system, maybe, uh, uh, which was in, well published in, in 1822 and invented by uh, Ponsele when he was prisoner of war in Saratov after the Napoleonic War. He was an officer of the uh, French army and he had plenty of time apparently there and well, he, he made it to this, uh, well, he essentially developed uh, biggest part of productive geometry and in particular uh, this consoliparism. So I will speak about that. Consoliparism. And this is a, a integral system. So it's actually a dynamical system which uh, has, uh, well, properties of, of being integrable and I will explain why. And I recall perhaps it's, well, it's maybe known in, from high school, but uh, this is a, um, so I'll draw a picture uh, for that. I'll just ch change to another window. Uh, so uh, the idea is you have two, two uh, conics. So you have one conic, you have another conic. And then you can uh, draw, uh, you can st st uh, start with a point uh, on the, uh, uh, on the one, one conic, then take a line which is tangent to the second conic until the intersection. Uh, well, this, this point is supposed to be tangent. But now that you continue, uh, sorry, I'm quickly out. More. So you continue, you continue uh, etc. So this is a this is a sequence you get well the dynamical system is just you take a point and you create another point and well it's, it's, and you get a broken line etc. So this is a uh, uh, sequence and in my case for example it will be almost closed well it's, it's become closed it's just by pure chance that they got the closed curve uh, uh, usually it's not but sometimes it happens that it's closed and the the theorem of uh, of uh, uh means that the broken curve that the broken broken line is either always closed. So independent on, on uh, for any initial point. Valodia, we don't see what you are writing. Ah. You didn't close your graphic. Uh, sorry, once more. Now you see? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it tells me, that, uh, sorry, always closed for uh, for uh, uh, for any initial point. Or or uh, uh, or not closed. So this is a, the theorem of uh, of Pontele, and uh, well, I'll try to uh, well translate a little bit everything in a little bit more more uh, open language uh, or more um, not modern language. So you have uh, well, you have two conics, Q1, Q2, 
you to the conics. The conics. And uh, uh, the idea is that you, you can construct out of that a, a, another uh, set. S is the uh, space of pairs of points Q1 and Q2. In uh, uh, Q1 times Q2, such that the line Q1, Q2 is tangent to Q2. So this is a, a well, a set, and I claim that S is an elliptic curve. Now I imagine that the curve now, well, I, uh, now I will draw pictures in real uh, plane, but I imagine that everything is complex. So S is an elliptic curve. It can be seen uh, quite easily in the following way. So now, well, since I'm complex, uh, well, setting, I'll draw the, the, the two, two uh, conics as intersecting each other. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, of course, you have a map from S to, uh, Q to Q1 and to Q2 because uh, it's just a subset of direct product. And I claim that these maps are uh, ramified. So the, uh, these maps are usually, it has two, uh, every point has two inverse images. For example, if this is Q2, and this is Q1, then uh, so you have a, an element of this line is such a segment, it's element of S. So uh, if you project into, into Q1, uh, then, uh, well, usually from every point, uh, you can draw exactly two lines which projects to, uh, Q, to which center to Q2 and F, F, every point to Q1. And, on the other hand, for, for every point of Q2, you have two lines, uh, which, uh, uh, well, two, two points of Q2, which is corresponds to. So you have, for example, here you have two lines. So if these maps are two to one, and this also is two to one, but uh, these maps are have four ramification points because, uh, so uh, for example, if you take the, uh, if you have a projection to Q1, then uh, obviously that uh, 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 I wrote maybe of the way around. I know that's okay. So here the ramification points are uh, well. The, it, you have four intersection points, and these intersection points are actually a ramification point of one projection. And on the other hand, if you take uh, 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 well, maybe I'll draw with another color the common tangents, four common tangents. To, to these lines. So if you have a common tangent, uh, then obviously if you take uh, the point on Q2 here, then there is exactly one point of Q1 corresponding to, because, uh, well, this, uh, you can, uh, uh, sorry, other way around. If you take the point of Q1, then there is only one point of, of, uh, of Q2 corresponding to. So this is a, a, a ramification point. So this is our ramification point. Uh, every projection has four ramification points. And therefore, the genus of uh, the conic is one, is zero genus, and therefore the genus of S is necessarily one. But on the other hand, one can write it down more, more explicitly and see that it's really write down an equation for, for, for this curve. And this is something which I will do nevertheless. Well, it's really elementary geometry, but nevertheless, I, I, I will do that. So, uh, so equation for S, for the curve S is the following. So I can take, well, uh, I can just, of course, take any 
uh, parameterization of my curves, but for, for simplicity, I'll, I'll do the following. First of all, I will choose a good coordinates on the plane. So uh, what, I, what I will do, coordinates, so this is a, I have one, and I have to connect, it's always here convenient to draw uh, the, uh, the intersecting connects. They always intersected for points in general position. So I will draw two common tangents. And let's take these points of tangency points and then draw these lines. And so these three lines will be my coordinate, coordinate system. So this is the line which x equals zero. So we have my projective line P two uh, parameterized by uh, X, Y, Z. And uh, the, this line is X equals zero. This line is Y equals zero. Uh, this is Y equals zero. And this is, will be Z equals zero. Uh, what we're on, maybe Z equals one. It doesn't really matter. That, uh, so this is uh, the coordinate system, and I claim that, well, what are our conics? So I'll choose for, for the conic, I choose two parameters. So uh, for, for one conic, the parameter will be, uh, will be lambda and for the other conic the parameter will be mu and the the equation of the conic is uh, the following that x x y and z are uh, quadratic forms of for example the parametric way to to write the conic is just saying that x y z are are uh, for one conic is x y z are ju just quadratic uh, expressions of, of lambda and the same thing for another conic. So conic is parameterized by three three quadratic polynomials. But uh, in this particular particular case, uh, well, maybe I will not speak very very in great detailed way. But uh, one curve is just will be the first curve will be uh, uh, given by first curve Q1 will be uh, well be Q2. I'll start with be Q2. Normal color Q2 is uh, just given by this uh, the set x uh, one x squared uh, lambda squared lambda and one. So I've just chosen the coordinate system in such a way that it's, it's very simple, and Q2. will be uh, a lambda mu squared plus b mu plus c, uh, sorry, maybe I'll write mu squared, uh, uh, a lambda uh, mu squared mu squared plus b mu plus c comma one. So these are two conics. Uh, well, in another way, uh, if you should change the coordinate system, the, the uh, one of the, the conics Q2 becomes a, just a parabola, and another one is, uh, well, is a kind of inclined parameter, which is just on, on, on this side. So, well, in this coordinate system, uh, well, you see that this is a parabola because uh, it goes from just one front side and it's a tangent to the to the line at infinity, which is z equals zero. So both both actually both conics become parabolic in this. And uh, how to write down the equation for S? Uh, it's very easy. It's just uh, you you need to write the determinant of uh, these two lines. So you take one uh, uh, lambda squared, lambda squared, lambda one mu squared a mu squared plus b mu plus c one uh, 
uh, one. And you take the derivative of I, uh, of, of this one, so it's two lambda for two lambda one zero, and this determines is equal to one. And what is uh, important now? I will just compute the, the the determinant, and this will be the equation, which is uh, well the aim of my statement. That equation is uh, quite remarkable. So this is a lambda squared. Uh, one moment, if if I it correctly. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, well, the determinant is two lambda squared plus mu squared uh, minus uh, lambda squared minus a mu squared plus b mu plus c times to lambda, which is equal to, well, of course, lambda squared, mu squared minus two a mu squared lambda plus b mu lambda plus two c two c lambda minus. Hopefully, like that. Sorry. Yes, like that. <laughs> uh, well. Uh, Please uh, pay attention to, to that because I, like uh, Michal Michal Postikov was saying, I'm uh, uh, I'm computing uh, uh, fast and with mistakes. So this is uh, uh, this is that. So uh, what I want to really uh, out of that this picture, I want to do the following the following uh, uh, picture. So I want to draw. A Newton polygon of this, this equation. So this is equal to zero. So this is a curve. And the Newton polygon of this curve uh, will be, so it's, this is one, this is two. This is degree with respect to, to lambda. This is really the degree of respect to mu. And so lambda squared is this point. Uh, mu squared is this point. Uh, 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 mu squared lambda is this point. Uh, mu lambda is this one. Uh, uh, lambda is, uh, one moment, it was working correct. Yeah, this one. So I have five points with five terms, five points, and I can finally make a, a convex polygon of out of that, and uh, this will be this, this polygon. And I can, in principle, I can draw the coefficients here. So this is will be, uh, uh, this will be uh, lambda squared with the coefficient one, u squared with the coefficient one, or power and I don't want to mix with uh, one, one with the coefficients of this equation. So mu squared lambda is this minus two a. Uh, this will be, uh, to be, uh, this will be C. So I have a polygon. I can, in, instead of my- well, Now minus, there should uh, be minuses. Oh yeah, minuses here and two also. So uh, I, in order to write down, uh, instead of write down something in the line, I will draw a picture and put put coefficients uh, here. And it's just the way of encoding the polygon. Well, and uh, you can see that uh, the, well, uh, once again, you can see for that this gives a, a elliptic curve because it's covered, for example, for any given value of lambda, it's a, polygon, a polynomial of degree two. So this is twice, uh, it's double covering of, of the, the plane and uh, the number of, uh, number of, um, Ramification point is exactly uh, is exactly four. So for that, of course, you need to compute the discriminant and compute where the discriminant is zero, and that's exactly four and four points. So I will not do it exact, uh, explicitly, but the the uh, more of the story is is that. And now, how to see the evolution uh, of uh, well the, our our Ponce 
so far I just described this this f, but now I maybe return what is the evolution. So uh, evolution means that what the, the the broken line. So broken line is the sequence. Uh, so broken line is a sequence of points of f, but not any point. So the sequence is given by the following. So we have, you start with some point, which is, I'll call it lambda one mu one. Then what happens, then you uh, make, uh, you draw, uh, well, uh, you draw your, your, your tension. So you take a point, you draw uh, the, the, the segment tension to that. And then you take, draw the, the next segment. So this is a, here, you draw, maybe, maybe I'll just, that's sorry. Okay. Uh, so you have, you know, once again, I'll draw non-intersecting conics. So I have a point, I draw a segment, and then I continue the segment over there. So in this, uh, so this is Q2, this is Q1. So you see that if you jump, uh, here, so your point uh, of Q2, the, the point of Q2 doesn't change, and the point Q1 changes. So this point, for example, uh, well, this corresponds to lambda one mu one, and here the the mu doesn't change, but lambda changes. So you have lambda two mu one, and then you draw this line. The same thing, you you lambda two. Or a bit too small. And here you will have uh, lambda two mu two because lambda two doesn't change, lambda doesn't change, only mu changes. So you, you can imagine also uh, in another way, if you draw your curve in the coordinates lambda mu, so you have, uh, you have this S uh, as a curve, which is some, some curve, this is S, and you walk uh, along the curve, you just take, uh, you draw first vertical line, then you draw horizontal line, then you draw next again the vertical line. Then, well, horizontal is not very easy to see. Well, etc. Et so your broken line in the coordinates lambda mu is just a broken line, but all segments are either vertical or horizontal. And we are sure that since uh, it's uh, this is polynomial of degree to two, two with respect to lambda, two with respect to mu. We are sure that every point, except the, the a few ramification points, that every point has exactly under this projection has exactly two inverse images. So uh, this is always well defined evolution. So this is a broken line. So called, uh, uh, well, I'll just so goes to uh, lambda one. Uh, lambda two mu one, then lambda two mu two, etc. Lambda three mu two. So all these points uh, can be can be uh, uniquely determined by this condition. Now, uh, what is relation to uh, well what? We want we want really to figure out if uh, uh, why the consolidatorium is, is true. So it, this sequence is either periodic for any initial value of lambda mu or not periodic for for any initial value. So how to see it from from this picture? And for that, it's uh, a little bit more uh, advanced. Uh, advanced calculus is necessary. So what you do, you take uh, uh, well, the, the observation. Now, for for that, I need to to use the the uh, the Jacobian of the curve, and Jacobian of S is just by definition, it's a free group generated by the points of S. So this is a free group generated by the points of S. Uh, these are divisors uh, on S quotiented by the the principal divisors. So this is. Well, I'll, I'll draw maybe this is uh, divisors of S. And this is nothing but just free group generated by the points of S. And this is a quotient by the 
divisors, uh, the, the principal divisors of S. So it's uh, zeros of functions. So zeros of monomorphic functions. Zeros minus poles counted with no precision of monomorphic functions. And we know that uh, this quotient is actually, well, it's almost the same as this curve, but not canonically. So I would draw it as just C quotiented by, by a lattice of Z squared. So this is uh, also in, uh, by, by it's coincides with this curve, but this is uh, only for, for genus one. Uh, so this is, a, uh, this is a finite dimensional space. And then uh, it's a group actually, well, it's a group. And on this group, it's very easy to to uh, figure out what is uh, what is the evolution because uh, what happens uh, if you start with the point A. So uh, now let's take well the next point is a point A one, and what what can see uh, say about that A plus A one. So A plus A one is a uh, and let's take well let's take the here the point lambda a. So a plus uh, a one uh, is a, is the zeros of the function uh, uh, which is so zeros a and a one zeros of the function. Uh, lambda minus lambda a. So, uh, and what are the poles of the function of lambda minus lambda a? The, the poles of the function is just the, the actually two, two of the four ramification points. So these are, well, these points, so the, the functions uh, lambda minus lambda a, the, the, divisor of the point lambda around the A divisors poles of lambda of uh, the function lambda lambda A minus lambda A are functions are points at infinity. And they do, do not depend uh, well at infinity, two points at infinity. Two because well, well I'll I'll uh, denote it by two infinity one, and therefore, therefore, comma, it's comma and this is one, and therefore a plus a one is equal to well and in the group the two equals to two po two infinity one. Uh, uh, in the group uh, Jacob, uh, uh, in the, this group, Jacobian of S. So in this group, well, the sum of these two mean minus these two is the principal divisor and therefore it's, it's zero. So we have that A1 is equal to two infinity one minus A. Uh, uh, for for the same uh, reason, then you pass from A1 to A2. Then for, for the same, uh, uh, that H2 equals two infinity two, because infinity one is, well, maybe, maybe I should write instead of infinity one, I should write infinity lambda. So it's infinity lambda means the points where lambda uh, is, uh, becomes infinite. And this is infinity mu, mi minus H1. So therefore, a one, a two is equal to infinity to infinity mu minus two infinity lambda plus a one a a, and the evolution two-step evolution is just addition of this. So 
this some elements belonging to Jacobian of my curve C, of, of my curve S. And uh, so Jacobian is this group, which is C comma uh, C quotiented by C squared. So uh, independent on the starting point A, uh, if this element, uh, so uh, if this element has finite order, then the trajectory is closed independent on what which we started with. If this element is uh, of infinite order, then uh, for any A, it's never never closed. So A, I can write down that A uh, uh, to N is equal to, to N times to infinity mu minus two infinity lambda of A. So, this is just the, uh, the evolution. So now I'll, uh, I'll stop with this particular example, which I'll uh, just show to you that, uh, well, some features, and uh, I'll try to generalize this picture. So now generalization for arbitrary, Uh, polygon. So uh, let's take uh, well Newton maybe maybe do better to say the Newton polygons. So what we uh, what is Newton polygon? Newton polygon is a just polygon with uh, with vertices in integral points. So you have a, uh, well, I will draw the coordinate axis, but it's not necessary. So let's fix a polygon with uh, just uh, vertices and integer points. Maybe I'll draw a little bit differently. We'll see, you'll see why in a moment. That. So I take any polygon with vertices. So the so delta will be a polygon with integral with vertices, convex. With vertices in Z2. And I'll, uh, well, I'll, uh, for, for this polygon, I, we can associate the family of curves. So family of curves of algebraic curves given by uh, a polygon, a polynomial equation, P zero equals P of lambda mu where, uh, which is a sum over Cij, where Cij are some coefficients, lambda to the i, mu to the j. And I suppose that it's, it's actually a uh, Laurent polynomial. So i and j can be, well, this poly polygon can be also in uh, negative part. It's not necessarily a positive octant. So it's a Laurent polynomial. Uh, uh, so this is ij belonging to this uh, delta. So for any choice of the coefficients, I have a curve. Uh, and uh, well, easy remark that uh, if we, uh, well, well, this is a curve. So the, first of all, the curve is uh, uh, curve C. Well, big C, you can imagine this as, as, as a curve, or it's just a collection of these coefficients. So it's the same letter. So remark the curve C. So this is a curve in. So so for all C belongs to uh, the uh, the uh, well. I just since it's a Laurent polynomial. So I, I imagine this curve is belonging to not to C squared, but to C squared C star squared. So this is a I exclude coordinate axis. So this is a curve. Uh, 
uh, and uh, apparently the properties of this curve can be very easily read from the, the this polynomial and this is well some also 19th uh, well 18th century the 19th century uh, mathematics but nevertheless I will repeat it because it's kind of not very popular uh, so the first statement uh, about about that is that of course C is not compact. C is not compact. It's never compact. And there are no compact curves in, in C star squared, but C is not compact. But uh, if you you can compactify it to a smooth curve, so it's a compact curve minus some some points, and so the C bar minus C C bar is a compactification. To a smooth curve compactification. Of course, well, I do not speak about that, but I suppose that the coefficients are generic, so the curve is not singular. In principle, there is a, some uh, condition on C, which, well, there are some, some singular curves about this family, but for, for a moment, I speak about non singular curves. So this uh, compactification of C, and the claim is that. If you take C bar minus C, then uh, this uh, this uh, set has a, a finite many, many elements. You of course you simplify by finite many points, and these points actually are equal to the number of a boundary uh, uh, the number equals to the number of points in the boundary of uh, well boundary of delta. Uh, well, I can write intersection with a squared, but it's not well, it's more or less. So in this particular example, for example, there are one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, and six. So there are six points of infinity. Uh, well, uh, this is, uh, I, I'll say a few words why it's in the case. It's, it's not very, very complicated to see. Uh, the reason, so the proof, the proof is the following. So let's take, uh, first of all, first remark. Uh, remark, then if you have, a, a, well, the group, uh, the polygons, uh, define the same curve, well, maybe I will reformulate in another way. If you act by SL2Z, well, action of the uh, semi direct product of SL2Z uh, uh, semi direct with the squared, such that you take uh, P uh, of lambda mu and send it to lambda to the i, mu to the j, p to the lambda a, mu b, uh, lambda c, mu d, with uh, a, b, c, d, a, b, c, d equals one. So if you have the term that equals one, this is a just automorphism of C star squared. And, uh, well, uh, uh, yes, you can of course multiply the polynomial by, by monomial and it doesn't change the curve. Uh, so the curve is the same, so it doesn't change the curve. The curve, so the curve is as a mark to the original one, but on the other hand, the Newton polygon is changed. So it's, it's just, we can uh, move it uh, on the plane as we wish, and you can also apply the the automorphism to the plane. So uh, you, we don't distinguish poly polygons, which uh, are uh, the, such as the, the differences in this in this when we shift by by SO to Z. So this is a uh, uh, now what we can do. We can uh, just move it to the polygon in such a way is more convenient for us. So suppose we have, uh, suppose that delta, uh, suppose that delta is a form. So uh, delta is, well, I'll, I'll just draw the picture. 
So this is a polygon where one segment is just uh, on on the on the original axis. So this lambda this is mu, and I'll uh, consider this kind of polynomial. So in this case, so it means that p of lambda mu equals well uh, we can think of both as, as, as a polynomial of mu. So the, the zero of p zero of lambda plus mu p one of lambda plus etc. So we can decompose its polynomial of mu. And uh, obviously that uh, mu, the points where uh, mu equals zero corresponds to uh, roots of, of P zero. So therefore, well, we, it's, it's, uh, this curve is definitely non-compact. It it's goes to infinity. Uh, well, then mu equals zero. Well, I, since we have in a C star, uh, so there are, then I think about infinity, that zero is also infinity. Something doesn't belong to, to C star. So uh, uh, when, well, the curve is not compact because mu cannot be zero, but we, if we add these terms, these points, uh, namely the roots of P zero, then uh, uh, we, we com a little bit compactify our curve. So therefore, for every, for every edge, well, for, for this edge, we can add points and, and the curve becomes a little bit more comp compact. But since we can rotate the, the, our polygon as we, we wish, uh, we can this make this procedure to any side of the curve. And for any side of the curve, we need to add uh, as many points as uh, we have, uh, we have um, roots of the corresponding polynomial. And the polynomial, uh, well, uh, if you the, here is zero, it is this k, then, uh, well, the this degree of this polynomial is what's called integer length of this side. So this is the number of uh, integer points on, on this side minus one. Uh, so this, therefore, uh, the, well, for every every edge, you, you add uh, its integer length, uh, and uh, the for, for the whole polygon, we will add integer length of the total uh, perimeter of, of this polygon, and so you add exactly uh, as many points, which is equal, uh, which is equal to the number of po just points and boundary points on the polygon. So this is a just an uh, uh, argument why it's uh, why it's the case, uh, why the number of points of infinity equals to points of infinity, it's points to, to, necessary to complexify the curve. So the, the second remark is that uh, uh, if you have a, uh, the genus of the curve, G of C, uh, or T bar, of course, it's just by definition the same thing, uh, is equal to the number of points of uh, you take the po polygon inside the polygon. Uh, well, minus the boundary intersected with uh, it. This is a simplest possible way to compute a, a genus of a algebraic curve. Uh, and uh, the, well, also I'm not going to give the proof, but uh, well, I'll write it down the argument by the case. And the argument is the following that uh, you can write down explicitly the uh, uh, exactly this many homomorphic forms. So let's denote it, well, we construct this many homomorphic forms, forms on C. And uh, one can do it the following way. So let's take the, the, the uh, form omega ij, which is, will be equal to the residue of uh, d lambda d mu over lambda mu 
times uh, 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 lambda to the i mu to the j lambda mu times p of lambda mu. So this is a, a form, it's a monomorphic form with a pole. So it's monomorphic two form. You can compute the residue. The residue is, of course, a, 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 a meromorphic. Uh, the residue is holomorphic form uh, on on the uh, on the zeros of, of the denominator. So on the set where it's pole. So and uh, I recall that the residue is a uh, holomorphic form unless uh, on the condition that if this, this curve is non singular. So if you have the expression uh, d lambda d mu uh, divided by some, some, some polynomial, which is not the same q of lambda mu, and this defines a non singular curve, then uh, the, the residue is non singular, is non singular. So it's holomorphic. Uh, holomorphic is holomorphic. Is holomorphic. If uh, Q lambda, uh, uh, if and only if uh, Q of uh, lambda mu defines in uh, define equals zero is non singular. So therefore uh, uh, you uh, well now you can consider the same uh, the same uh, uh, situation well you can come back to, to, to this situation the, the, the in this in particular, If uh, if p lambda mu uh, if p lambda mu equals equals p zero plus mu p one plus etc., then raise it to uh, of uh, well this omega j i j is non singular. For mu equals zero, if uh, the uh, the uh, the power of mu j is positive, strictly positive, because well, if if, if uh, j is uh, greater than one, then well, this curve is p divides a non-singular curve, but once you multiply it by mu, then it becomes singular, of course mu equals zero. So you, you have, well, you have, your, your curve has the form something like that. So you have a curve which just uh, goes, this is x mu, this is lambda. And then you multiply the polynomial by mu, it means that you, you just join uh, this horizontal line and you get a curve which is singular. And therefore the residue has poles on, on this intersection point. So these are, uh, this is, and well, therefore you you need in order for this form uh, uh, this form to be holomorphic at this point you need that the j may be positive. But uh, once again, uh, this this form is well. If you change you apply this is L two z uh, on on this form, it's transformed uh, accordingly. So S L two z acts on on the form of this type. Uh, and therefore, you can always reduce your problem to the problem uh, of this kind. So therefore, with respect to every edge, uh, you can say the following, that ij must be uh, to, the, uh, to the internal side of, of every edge. So for every edge, you are sure that ij should be this way. So it means that the only, the only form which is, uh, which is homomorphic uh, on all points, at all points at infinity, it's necessary, uh, necessarily correspond to the points which are inside the polygon. So this is a, uh, this is a, well, at least explicit formula for all 
uh, of, of whole holomorphic differential for that. Of course, you need to then to prove that there are no other homomorphic differentials, but uh, well, this is also not very complicated uh, argument, but uh, well, I'll draw it now. So what, what we have now, you have uh, that uh, for given uh, given polygon, the topology of the curve is, is quite well well defined. And another, uh, in, uh, now the, another remark, so this is C, uh, A, B, uh, C, well, A, it's B. The question number C is the following. So uh, this is a theorem of, uh, 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 theorem of, uh, uh, Bernstein, Kushnerenko, ah, maybe, maybe I should, uh, okay, Kowantke, I will formulate in a simplest possible way where one can say that suppose you have two curves. So you have a delta one and delta two So there are two curves. Uh, well, two polygon polygons. And uh, sigma one and sigma two, uh, S one and S two, sorry. C one, C two. Two curves. Uh, once again, I suppose that the curves are generic. Then one can ask the following question. What is the number of, of uh, intersection points? So you, I can C1 intersect with C2. So we have two curves in uh, one dimensional curves in, in two dimensional space. So they have finitely many, generically finitely many intersection points. And the formula is the following that this is a, uh, you need to do the following. You have to take the, the volume of the first polygon plus the second. So the sum of the polygon is, I mean that you, you just take vector sum of all points of one polygon to the points of another polygon. So this is sum of the two, two polygons minus a volume of delta one, which is called mixed volume. It's actually true for arbitrary dimension, but we don't need to of delta two. This uh, well uh, exercise uh, home uh, work uh, proves this formula, and the remark is that the easy consequence of this statement uh, uh, that the genus is equal to the number of points inside the, the boundary, uh, because you can uh, well the uh, it's a consequence. Well, maybe I should just say that this is a consequence of the fact that uh, the genus of so uh, the the number of intersection of uh, so you, if you take uh, two polygons, two curves, and two well, so the two polynomials, polynomials, p1 and p2. So the uh, the let's consider the polygon, which is a polynomial, which is p1 times p2. So the root of this polygon uh, is just the union of the curve. So let's consider the, the, this polynomial P1 times P2 uh, plus epsilon equals zero. So this is a, uh, almost the same thing as C1 union C2. So, but not exactly the same thing. It means that we take, well, if, if we do not write epsilon, then it's just you, exactly union C2. But if we deform a little bit, so every time we have a interse small intersection, we deform and it actually we, we just uh, have two surfaces and we add, uh, well, if we deform a little bit, that's the same thing as we, glue a little handle to to the to the two surfaces. So you have C1 and C2, the 
they transfer us to intersect in four dimensional space and you we deform a little bit so it's the same thing as just we topologically what happens is we glue a little a little tube between the two surfaces so therefore the genus of uh, of uh, this this curve uh, this this curve well i will denote it by c prime so genus of c prime is equal to the genus of c1 plus the genus of c2 minus uh, uh, minus the number of intersection uh, plus the number of uh, plus the number of intersection points uh, t1 intersection with c2 and now you you know the expression of the genus in terms of, of uh, uh, well you need the uh, in terms of internal points as once again also you need uh, to use the peak theorem theorem peak also uh, very popular because it's, it's a part of uh, high school program in Germany, but not in any other countries, as far as I know. So the theorem of pick means that the number of uh, the volume of the uh, volume of the polygon is equal to, well, volume is area in this case, of course. Volume of the polygon is equal to number of internal points. So number of uh, the points delta uh, uh, minus minus d delta plus one half the number of the boundary points d delta uh, minus one. This is a, the big theorem and you can deduce uh, the, well, and I have very, so uh, only uh, a little bit of, a uh, uh, little time, so a few minutes. So I'll formulate uh the well all, with all this uh this data i will try to formulate the uh generalization uh of of the poncelet for a moment, I will just say the from Soleil involutions. So what I mean by Poncelet involution, so this, this uh, my Poncelet evolution, which is dynamical system is actually, well, it consists of, uh, well, composition of two involutions. One involution just uh, takes a point and takes another point on the same, vertical line and here you take a point and that's another point and another same horizontal line so i want to do uh, to describe the Poncelet involution for for uh, well generalize it for arbitrary arbitrary Newton polygon and the uh, the idea is the following so uh, let's do the following let's take well uh, the uh, uh, bernstein postnirenka hamanski bkk in place they are the number of intersection points. Well, you, if you take a, a, a um, uh, if you take a, a curve, uh, if sigma, if is s and s prime correspond to the same Newton polygon. Same delta, then uh, the number of intersection points of S, just, uh, uh, C, sorry, why I, I write as C, C prime, C, C prime is equal to uh, the volume, twice the volume of, uh, uh, of the delta. Which is equal to, according to peak formula, uh, the uh, to, uh, to the peak formula, it's equal to the two G. Sorry, was there a reason why you kept writing S instead of C? Is that some different notation, or were you implying something else by mistake? By pardon, uh, excuse me, the, from the beginning of the sentence, I didn't understand. 
So you were writing S instead of C by mistake? No, no, no. Uh, uh, it's yeah, always C. It's always it should be C. But why were you doing it? Was that a different notation that you were working on, or was it really just completely a mistake? No, no. It's a, it's a mistake because well, the curve C is a curve. Yeah, S is a surface, so uh, that's the reason why sometimes, uh, well, if you consider purely complex words as C, it's, it's a real word as S, but it's just a mistake. It's okay, a mistake. thanks. Yeah, this is a, uh, so this is a, uh, so this uh, peak, peak theorem tells us that this is a, uh, the volume is equal to, well, you multiply by two, is two times G, plus the number of points of infinity because the, the boundary points correspond to points of infinity. So plus and the points of infinity, which is, uh, I would denote by S. So remark S is equal to the number of points of C bar minus C. Uh, uh, minus two because uh, you have this minus one is a big theorem. So this is a, uh, a, uh, a uh, Number of points on on the uh, on the curve. Yet now uh, intersection. So if you just just before the coefficients, then uh, the curve uh, it self intersects kind of self intersection point. So you deform the coefficients, and this is the number of intersection points. Now the idea of what happens, what to do uh, with the dynamical system for arbitrary arbitrary curve. So you take uh, any poly any Newton polygon. So for if, if it's very uh, any Newton polygon, you get the curve, which just can be complicated. And instead of, well, what I did before, uh, I took one point and then just evolved this curve. So now instead of taking, uh, taking one point, I take G points. So let's take G points on the curve. So evolution, on g tuples of points on this on the on on s uh, once again one uh, on c so i get g tuples of points and c and now i do the following i just deform uh, the curve uh, well i have these g points and i want to define an evolution so in particular because involution, involution. I want to define the involution of the, this curve. So, for to do that, I need to do the following. I need to uh, cons construct a let's see star be a curve such that first uh, it it uh, passes through. through my points, my uh, g double of points, and uh, another uh, property that the, uh, the coefficients of, of this point, so uh, the coefficients of my uh, are well the the polygon is the same and the newton polygon well the newton polygon is the same is the same and also well a little bit a strange condition then you want to the following that if you have this as the uh, C and the 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 other. So I want the coefficient of the boundary be the following. So here will be uh, well the coefficients will be small c one etc small c n. And here I want to, this coefficient to be c one, c two. Up to certain point c k, and then the other coefficients will be c. Well, I'll multiply by some coefficients. It can be even zero, but doesn't matter. I don't know. 
uh, uh, alpha T1, TK plus one, this is our alpha TK. TM. So I take my, my curve, I multiply all the coefficients on the boundary from certain moments. So I just divide it by two. I multiply the coefficient here by some constant. I, I keep the coefficients on the other side and I get another curve. And I claim that this curve intersects. So I draw a curve and I claim that this curve intersects. So this is C, this is C prime and they intersect exactly at so I take points and now intersect exactly at, at uh, G more points. So we have, there are two G intersection points. Why? Because uh, according to this formula, it's uh, the number of intersection points is two G plus F minus two. But F minus two, this condition, which, which uh, I, I uh, pick up here, ensured me that these two curves intersect in exactly f plus two points at infinity. So uh, the, they are uh, infinite, uh, there are f plus s minus two points at infinity of intersection and exactly uh, G, two G points inside. So it's, you take a G point and you get another G to the of one and you return back. So this, uh, this is really evolution and uh, this is generalization of uh, Poincelet uh, evolution for, for arbitrary polygon. So, well, I stopped here. I just spoke a little bit too much, uh, too, too long. So I stop here and next time I'll just complete that. Once again, I completely switch the point of view and I'll explain what the relation between this uh, thing with a fine Lie algebra and next time for, with, with uh, divers and flags. So this will be just uh, different points of view on the same, on the same system. So, Thank you very much. I'm sorry for over time. Okay, so thank you very much, Valodya. So, uh, any questions? Yeah, if I may ask. Um, yeah, sure, Sasha. Valodya, um, so when you uh, when you choose this C1 to CK, um, can you? Uh, I'll say so. So for each for each K, you have uh, uh, separately yeah. defined involution, right? Yeah, yeah, I have an evolution for every way to cut, cut this poly polygon in two. Okay, great, thank you. This is a group, uh, well, this is the abelian group of involution. Well, uh, they, they generate some, some not abelian groups, but some group uh, which this evolution. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, I got it, yeah, sorry, uh, thanks. Yeah, some, some discrete group, which is, uh, well, for for uh, all particular polynomials, there is one discrete evolution, but in general, there are many of them. Okay, no questions. Oh, if there are no more questions, then we thank Valodya for, for the introductory lecture and continue tomorrow, the same time, the same place.